Welcome to the third section of our Mastering Prime Physics video course. In this section, we'll be looking at different components that allow us to work with lists of data, both for viewing and editing. In video 3.1, we'll learn how to create a basic data table for displaying data. The Prime Faces data table is a robust JSF table component, which can be heavily customized according to the needs of your specific application. Moreover, it is easy to use and fun to work with. First, let's create a set of data that we can use to display within our data table component. What we'd like to do is create a table to list each of the registered users of the Prime Auto Sales application. If you'll recall from the previous sections, we've developed a user input form which allows one to register for receiving notifications and newsletters from the application. We'll now display those users via a list and we can now generate that within the user registration controller class. Let's get started. First, open up the user registration class and provide a private field named user list of type list. Specify a generic type parameter of user to ensure that only user object types can be stored. Now, let's make this field accessible to other classes and views by generating getters and setters. In NetBeans, I'll go ahead and I'll right click on the field identifier, then choose Refactor, and finally, Encapsulate Fields. Then, we need to populate this list with the users in the database. There are many ways to do this, but for now, what we'll do is simply create a method named populate users and implement the population of the list within it. We'll simply use the EJB find all method to return all users. Now we need to wire up this method to an action point so that it is invoked to populate the list, which we'll be using for our data table component. Let's go ahead and generate a new view, and since this view is going to be used by the administrators for the site, we'll create a new folder named admin at the root level of our web application. And then we will create a view within that folder. Let's name the view current users. Again, to create this view, we right click on the folder and then add a new XHTML file as we've done previously. Now let's go ahead and open up the index.xhtml view, select all and copy it. We are then going to copy the code in this view to the newly created view as a starting point. and then we'll remove the content of the view and add our data table. However, we have to make one change to the template by specifying the new path since we are inside the admin folder now. Simply add the dot dot to the front of the path to tell the runtime to go up one level to find the layout folder. Now that we have a blank template to work from, let's add some content. First, let's add a simple identifying header current registered users. Next, let's add the data table component to the view, giving it an ID of registered user list. Set the value attribute of the table equal to the list that we generated within the user registration controller by specifying an expression. That will be used to populate the table with the contents of the user list. Now we need to have a way to get a handle on each individual entity record within the list, so we add the var attribute of the data table and let's specify user to identify each individual record. That's it for now. It's time to add some depth to the table by adding individual columns. The Prime Faces data table makes it nice and easy to specify column headers and values in a single element by using the P column component. Let's add a column and we will provide an ID of first name and a header text attribute of first. The header text attribute is used to display the column header. Nested inside of the column, we will add the output text component and provide a value of it and an expression indicating var.first, meaning that we want to display the first field of the current user record. Note that it really helps if you use a good IDE for developing content such as this. NetBeans IDE is an excellent IDE for using auto completion, even at the individual data table record level. You can see that when I am typing the user, all the available user fields are showing up in the pick list. Let's follow suit by adding three more columns, last, age, and email address. This will complete the data table for now. We will come back to the table and customize it a bit later. Now that we have the data table set up, we need to populate it by invoking that populate users method that we created in the user registration controller class. We can do this by specifying a JSF view action upon view loading 
the view action component is new as of JSF 2.2, so you'll need to be using Java EE 7 in order to be using this feature. If you are using an older release of Java EE, you can most likely use the JSF pre-render view solution instead. Let's add an F metadata element to the top of the view, and we'll embed an F view action within it. For the action attribute of the view action, specify an EL expression and call upon the populate users method. This action will be invoked upon the initial request and not on post back. Now that we've developed the view and backend logic, let's check it out. First, let's make a convenient way to access our newly created view by adding a link within the menu of our application. To do so, open up the template and add a new command link to specify navigation to the new view. Now let's run the application and click on the newly added link. Our current user list should be displayed. Note how the data table component is nicely styled by default, providing different colors for odd and even rows. Also, the headers are styled nicely, and we haven't even customized the table yet. One thing to note about the newly added link in the menu is that we will now break the other links since we are in the admin folder with this view. We will need to repair those menu links later by adding a JSF navigational action method and programmatically specifying the path to the appropriate view, or by using navigational cases within the faces config file. It's also possible to create a lazy data model for loading the data to the data table in a lazy manner. This means that not all the data will be loaded at once, which can help increase performance, especially with larger data sets. To implement lazy loading, you must specify the lazy attribute and set it to true. You must also bind an org.primefaces.model.lazyDataModel as the value for the table, and implement a load method within the data model. This lazy data model can be implemented as a standalone class, which extends the lazy data model parameterized over the object that is being used to populate the table. In the case of this example, we extend a lazy data model using generics with a user object. The second option is to create a bean that will be used to load the table and implement a loading mechanism and lazy data model within it. Assign the lazy data model as a data source for the data table and you're good to go. For this case, let's create a new package and name it org.packed.primeautosales.bean and add a new class named lazy user model to it. This class will, in fact, not be used to encapsulate lazy users per se, but rather it'll be used to load users into the table in a lazy fashion. Extend the lazy data model user in the class and then create a private list user field named data source. Now create a constructor that takes a list user as an argument and uses it to populate the new data source field. Next, let's create a load method, of which I will not go into much detail for this session since it can be fairly complex. The load method should accept the following arguments. int first, int page size, string sort field, sort order, sort order, map, string object filters. Within the implementation, simply iterate over the data source and load the data accordingly. As mentioned a moment ago, we could go into depth here and filter data somehow, but here we'll remain at a higher level for the purposes of this video. Also within the method, we could implement a sorting algorithm. Typically, one could call upon collections.sort and pass the data along with a lazy sorting class, but we will not do that for this example. Lastly, set the model row count. Next, we need to implement a get row key method which accepts a user object as an argument and returns an object. Here, we will simply return the user's ID. Lastly, implement a method named get row data which accepts the string argument and returns a user object. The implementation will traverse over the data model and return a matching user ID. Now, go back to the user registration controller and create a new class field of type lazy data model and name it user model.
Next, in the populate users method, let's comment out the original implementation and set the user model equal to a new lazy user model and pass in all the users from the EJP call. Lastly, let's open the current users.xhtml view and set the lazy attribute on the data table to true. And then set the value equal to user registration controller dot user model. Now when we run the code, the model is going to be loaded lazily. Again, we can get in much more granular detail with our implementation if we wish, but this should get you going along loading your data lazily. That's it for the default data table component. In this section, we looked at adding a simple data table component to a view and wiring it up to be populated with entity data. In the next section, we'll take a look at how to make this table editable at the row level.